Will Galio be banned? I don't know if they have to. Last time they tried to set up a trade where it was Caitlyn versus Rise. H2K took the Rise. I don't think they do that again. I think that Caitlyn has proven to be so important for when it comes to winning that bottom lane. And no Galio ban just yet, and I like the Rise ban. Don't opt into that trade. Might be a Caitlyn ban here for Vitality because of the Rise. Do H2K then just immediately pick the Galio? What is the option going don't to Don't think be? they have to. Vitality have not shown us Galio mid lane. It does not seem like a champion they want to play for Jizuke. I don't think you have to grab it early. There's the Caitlyn. You could go for preferred jungle choice. We've seen Gilius take Sijuani multiple times. Sion and Tom Kench are also here. Two of the most contested picks in the series. Nobody tells you likes to play it, but when they grabbed it last game, they got completely counterpicked bot lane and it was bad. This did not work for them. Tom Kench will be the pickup for H2K. No Kate Morgana to counter it. Not gonna be an option in Deficio. It's not just H2K that have been reliant on red side to win, or not reliant, but rather successful on red side. As you see in patch 8.5, 77.8% win rate for red side overall. Europe seems to favor it immensely as it's only 46.7 in North America. You can see the power of those counter picks in this meta, and the flex pick Scion is coming in. Vitality more than comfortable trying to make use of it. And then Classic Europe here, focusing on Tristana when Zaya and Caitlyn are gone. Varus is not a contested pick for a lot of teams. When we look over at Sherith, we know there's multiple late game carries he can play. He's already shown us the Jinx. We've seen the Vayne all the way back in the start of the split. We've seen a ton of focus on getting him into late game team fights. And with this uh, Tom Kent already locked in, you know HK can try and grab a hyper carry and still survive the laning phase. No surprise that Shook grabs his Zack. Jin has also been the other pick that they've gone towards. Do they want to give it a more utility role? Looks like instead, Selfie may be the one forced to blind pick in this scenario, wanting to save as much as possible. Ooh, interesting. Something uh, we have to see actually if it gets locked in, it is going to be the Orn. It's uh, a champion that not a lot of top laners still want to use, but after, already, but after already seeing the Scion, they feel like they want to grab it early. I want to see what kind of combos they want to do with it. Long range engage, plus, of course, the Zac and one thing we did learn on the Euphoria podcast with Soas and Odamna on the Dog Champ tier list, Orn is actually considered least, or the least doggy, whatever. <laughs> the least dog lane. champ. So the most carry potential for individual tank can actually tank kill people in lane. That's what I'm trying to say. Is Smitty J going to take Ignite? This question will be answered as we get closer. But for now, we enter second ban phase. Gilius, no Sejuani for him this time. Will not get the opportunity to play it. Of course, Trundle's still up and available against triple tank team, essentially, at this point. Maybe a good option for them overall. And Nivea also taken off. They don't want that interrupting the Scion play if they do manage to find the picks. See for Vitality. Last picking. For your mid laner, it's a smart choice when you know that you can flex the Scion and could try and draft a carry for Capo Shot against this Orn top lane and then put Scion mid for Jizuke. It is an option. Of course, they can just grab Jungler. In the first one, I like the Jinx ban. We talked about it on the hyper carries we have seen from H2K. I Cassio gone. I think it's Snap Pick Trundle. I think it's risen in popularity. It's good against the three tankier members of this composition. It can interrupt Zack leap in. Other tank jungle options for Gilius Gragas is used in some regions. Uh, can also be picked here for him, but you have to see the carries also there, and you might get your Trundle. Now, the engage on Vitality is basically Sion at the moment. I want to see if Karkmore becomes one of the options for Sheriff. There is enough tanks to kill. He does have the Tom Kent to protect him early on, and you are fantastic on one item. Tristana needs three. I think it is something to consider at least. What are they going to go for? Debating between the Jin and the Ash. Ash looks like it will be the choice. Not the pick I expected to see here from the H2K. Of course, if you do protect it well in team fights, yes, there is a chance for Ash to become a strong carry, but I thought we were going to get something that was focused purely on Sheriff just dealing a ton of damage and not actually utility on his side. Oriana is a normal blind pick choice here for Selfie. Sheriff's first Ash locked in as well, and it looks like Selfie has been so good on the Cassidy in the past, but now he's blind picking it. Jizuke, what do you have up your sleeve to answer this pick? 
clearly Selfie's strongest at this point. Cyan mid with Banner to push into Cassidy. Otherwise, just put Cyan top and have something else left to kind of be with. Normally, we actually see Cassidy against Talia specifically. That being said, Talia still gets to push and can be active early on. And looks like Jizuka is so confident in his Talia, he grabs it despite already seeing the Cassidy. So surprising to see, Deficio. Definitely a lot of surprises in this Game 5 draft. Ash for Sheriff. Not an insane hyper carry. Blind pick, cast it in for selfie. And an Orn kind of showing up out of nowhere. It feels like a lot of top laners don't really go towards him. Chograth was available. It could have grabbed that one instead. Not wanting to go for it. Not wanting that ability to leap into the backside, of course. Born with some very long range, safe engage options. Maybe that's what they're looking to play around. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's a lot of engage on H2K side with the Zac already there, with the Ash Arrow from Sheriff. And of course, a bunch of pick damage and single target burst coming in from a Cassidy. But this is a very unique draft they're showing us in game five where Vitality are kind of sticking to a lot of what's been working for them. Top lane Scion, the Trundle was fantastic in game one from Gilius. And of course, this. Talia for Jizuke. It's been a huge pick for him. He doesn't care about the castle that he knows that he can carry the earlier game and he's gonna try and do it again. Can he do it up against Jizuke? Jizuke so much confidence. Has the potential to snowball these other lanes. We've seen Vitality play around it so well. We've seen Selfie utterly shut down by this Trundle, Trundle Jungle in game one. Now it rears its head once again in game five. Both teams gearing up. Everything on the line for both of these lineups. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready. Game five, H2K versus Vitality. A spot versus Fnatic on the line. A spot in Copenhagen. Guaranteed with a win here. And this Vitality organization only made playoff once before this. They instantly lost in the quarterfinal, and that was it. They pick up this new lineup, bunch of rookies, bring in Gilius try and lead the rookies, and they make playoffs again. They were competing for the top spots the entire regular season. Be a huge win for the organization and the players if they can make a semifinal. And of course, for H2K, a lineup that was one and seven. Basically done, out. Nobody Needed expected the changes. to turn, Deficio, but Nobody they expected make it happen. It. When Kadrel was the jungler for a moment, it seemed like everything was lost for H2K, and they were running out of options, answers. But then they bring in Shook. Kind of change everything around together with Selfie. Sheriff becomes a big late game carry, and now they can actually make the semi final. Looks like we might see an early invade coming in from Vitality. Selfie walks by, not going to see anything. Not clear if Vitality see them. Pings do come out, they spot Selfie. Now moving into the jungle, trying to get knowledge of where Zach is pathing early. Sheriff is here. They're going to take a bit of damage, they're going to start on Zach's red. We saw the Zach shut down in the previous game. Yeah. The early farm by the Sejuani. Looks like Gillies wants to rinse and repeat on that one. And it's actually pretty tricky for Zach to go to enemy red now because mid lane is going to get perma pushed by Jizuke. I don't think Shook can do it. He would risk dying. Gilius gets to steal away more camps. This is a great level one from Vitality, knowing they have mid lane control, knowing that Gilius' early dual power on a Trundle is very, very good. It's being pinged by H2K and Vitality. Yeah, they get the early vision down Shook as well. Do the anything. whole team is coming together to shut down Shook in the early game. They're not going to let him make any plays with the vision that they have. And early invades from Gilius continue. Him trying to shut down Shook. It's working very well. In the start, Gilius takes away two camps, leaves one small Raptor. Now we can also get the early Rift Scuttle on bottom side and trying to stop Sheriff and Promise Q from pushing. Shook uh, is moving in. He's spotted on a ward. So Vitality, they know he's going for this. Gilius might look for a gank instead. Vision is there. Trying to move forward. Has the pillar up and available. He's going to connect. Ooh. There's Bite, but no follow ups. Means Shook going to try to fire back, but Jizuke now moving up. Yeah, this fight's so risky for Shook because he knows the mid lane has been pushed against him. Jizuke takes a long route around. Shook might try and get it down in time with the smite. Finds him now. Could be in trouble. He's going to try to knock it back. Shook going to get it. Good damage now on Jizuke. Double buff means this is going to be a tough spot for Talia. Can't try to get the Blast Cone to get this out. He can't connect the Stretching Strikes to the Blast Cone. Not going to get it. Jizuke playing on the edge there. Orin available to follow up. H2K actually coming out on top in that trade. 
Shook gets the red buff. Important. Gilles could have gone his own uh, enemy red buff Raptor into his own red buff and denied any potential for Shook to invade. But he went for blue. He looked for the bottom side and then Shook found his way in. Vitality were hoping it was maybe enough using just Talia to stop him, but that actually ended up not working. So this was a big thing for H2K. Could have looked really bad for sure in the early game. Four stacks goes in. Unbreakable to stop any follow-up. Promise you to spit Sheriff right back out. But clearly, Vitality still playing with a lot of confidence despite their loss. And not only Drakus did Shook get the red buff. Selfie just got a full free wave in mid because the Suke was walking up to red buff, had to then take a fight against the Zac, had to recall so this Cassidy that normally gets pushed in 24-7 just got a bunch of free CS and experience. This ended up costing Vitality a lot more than it should have. They had all the control. Take enemy red, take your own red, Shook can't invade. But because they went bottom side with Gilius right there, they could not stop the Zac. And of course, Jazuke doesn't even get the tier back. Has to go back so early that he doesn't have the gold for it. Difficult spot to be in. Smitty J and Cabo continue to trade blows. No Ocean this time though, so neither one will get the advantage from the Drakes. But Infernal will prove to be very important for both of these lineups. We can expect it to be heavily contested when the team's feel ready. Sheriff, of course, picking the Ash because he really likes the early laning phase with it. So, so good at trading. Time Kench also adds a lot there. Good lane for H2K. And they can try and use the Time Kench to save the AD carry if Jizuke ults towards the bottom side. Jack 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 wants get. to keep it going. Just trying to threaten, trying to pressure off. Selfie now, swap to TP. Very early, can use it back to lane if he wants, or he can save it and have it ready in case Vitality try and make a play bot side. And he is currently saving it. Colonel Drake for Vitality, looks like it will be uncontested, no vision there. Just like we saw in game one when Gilius played the Trunkle, he gets the control, he gets the early Drake. And once again, when Vitality get early control, it is Infernal Drake spawning. Very good for them. Oh, and see on the side of H2K. They're very confident in the scaling on the Cassidy. So they want to just want, they just want to protect. They just want to make sure that Jizuke cannot snowball any lane. And then they know Selfie can become the big carry. And that's a lot of pressure on Selfie's shoulders. He's had a pretty turbulent career. You know, he's never been really at the top. But, but having the team put everything on him in a game five, if he can carry this, that will be massive for this player. Yeah, and I think it's fair to say that he's been a bit of an unsung hero uh, when it comes to H2K. We always talk about the Shook effect and then Sheriff being the big carry, but Sev has been one of the most consistent mid laners we've seen in the EU LCS. And then in late game fights, he's been very clutch. He's actually been able to land multiple of the big Oriana Shockwaves that could win a fight for them or on Cassidy. He's been able to dance in and out of fights and execute the correct squishy targets. So I understand H2K saying, well, you know what, we trust in him being the biggest carry, even though it's surprising to see Sheriff on an Ash and not a, a hyper carry in a game five, but it shows the trust in their mid laner from H2K. And of course, Selfie with the actual XP advantage in the lane means he gets level six first. And now, Zuke has to play scared. Gilius is here, I'm hoping to bait the all in, not gonna find it though. Selfie plays back, he knows he just has to wait. It hurts Jizuke so much that he had to go into that red buff. Found Shook, lost a 1v1, and gave Selfie a very free lane. Invade onto the blue buff. Small win here for Vitality when they grab it. Ilya seems to get it. HA continue to scale with the Cassidy. Just difficult for Jizuke, not gonna have the early kill pressure that he wants to get. Not going to be able to roam too comfortably either. A selfie with the Catalyst will be at least able to match a little bit. Although Jizuke will get priority to roam the top lane. Ulti has been used by Cabo. This might be a tower dive. Vitality turning it, saying we don't want to gank the time Kent. We want to gank the very low HP tank. Trundle on the way in. Ulti used from the Trundle. It's going to make it tough for Smitty J. Trying to get in for a little bit more. But first blood comes down and he burns the flash. It's a big advantage for Vitality. Selfie also using the TP, exactly what Vitality wanted in that exchange. Oh, right there. Smitty J saw a chance to flash when it came to the last amount of damage hitting him, so he could stay alive for a little bit longer and then buy time for Selfie to show up and make sure he could get a kill or two. Sadly for Smitty J, he was so low, he still got hit, took the damage and ended up dying and then using flash for effectively nothing. Selfie is up here, comes out trying to bait maybe. Not gonna be able to get anything, Selfie. Just gonna try to push out at least a little bit. That's suddenly a bigger win for Vitality than it was supposed to be. This could have just been one kill and then back away, but they get TP plus another flash. 
They turn towards top side. Smitigate takes a bad trade against Kabushad. He's now dropped low. And then look at the play when a TP comes in. They're trying to use the Arnold by time, get rid of the minion wave as much as possible. And I think the flash he goes for here is hoping if he stays alive for at least another second and gets one more hit on cover shot, Selfie shows up and gets a kill for himself. It's a one for one. But because that hit from Aguilia is still connected, Smitty J just dies for nothing. Not going to get it, not the end of the world, but definitely not how they wanted to start the matchup. You can see a slight advantage now over to the Scion because he is able to get the Negatron Cloak compared to the Null Magic Mantle. Gilly is going to not only take the blue away from H2K, but also be able to donate his blue buff over to Jazuke in the mid lane, trying to keep that push going. It does get harder as we get later into the game. Cassida not even completing a first item. Doesn't mean he can keep up for now. A thing to note is the fact that Jazuke is not running cleanse. There's an Ash on the side of H2K. Late game could be a big one. Trundle's here, though. Gonna try to lock him down. Is gonna get not be disabled, but will pull Gilius back, but that's not quite what they wanted. They do manage to spot the passive self. taking a lot of damage from Gilius. The Trundle is very strong. They want to take him down before he comes back up. Shook so low! Hey, he's gonna get it with the auto, so Jazuke. Oh, this is where Trundle shines. If you jump right into him, he's gonna win these trades every single time. H2K now with two mistakes that is getting super punished by Vitality. Summoners are gone, kills going over to Vitality. They're trying to defend with the time Kench. That's another big cooldown now. But you've now left bot lane all alone. Ornan might have to TP down just to save it. A lot more is happening in this game than I2K okay, were actually hoping for. And they opted into that play in mid. Gillis, he was right there. Took the fight, won it. Sheriff erring towards Jizuke, no cleanse. Arrow. Gotcha. A little awkward for Gilius. We'll just continue to clear the jungle though. Mostly unscathed. Only 200 damage at level 1 from the Ash. So let's see again. They don't know Gilius is around. And the moment Shook jumps in, he wants to get back because the damage from Trungo very, very high at this point in the game. And that's a big loss for HK and a big win for, eight, for Vitality here. Getting the kill plus the summoners. Now as we check in, back on the game, you can see a small gold lead for Vitality as well as the Infernal Drake, but that's not the biggest issue. Casting, of course, the terrifying point we're always going to have to keep our eye at. Doesn't have the Rod of Ages yet, just now manages to complete it, along with the magical footwear. And one of the players with early kills from Vitality is Jizuke. On the Talir, doesn't care about this Cassidy and pick whatsoever. Might look to go top again, because it is hard against the Tom Kench. We've already seen Vitality execute that once, no flash on Smitty J's side. And the double control ward set up is back for Vitality. They love controlling these two brushes. Let's them set up perfectly to roam to the bottom side of the map. So I have to remember this turret is very low mid. Vitality can just move mid now, take it down with Tristana, and boom, you get another advantage. Zuki okay, taking a bad trade, more worried about the minion wave, however. Promise Q, no ulti yet, he's used it before. All of Vitality are here, they're just gonna execute on it. Tell you have to back in. away. Forcing Elastic Slingshot out, that means Shook can't really come into this one. I set on the tower instead, Vitality keeping the momentum up in their favor. West completes as well, nice to have. Jack Troll gonna be able to lay down extra vision, they get extra gold, Vitality getting the early game they wanted. Yeah, good move here, facilitated by the fact that Shook opted in for that gank before and got punished by Gilius. Another win for the Vitality team. We're back to the classic style of Vitality winning early. Ooh, arrow going wide, not what they wanted. Of course, Jack Troll was there, however, so they may not have been able to follow up. Gillis is around mid again, hoping uh, maybe that Shook jumps in, like we saw before. Now he will up towards the top of that. Remember, this potential play against Smitty J is an option. And look, they're just going to set up for the blue buff, but Vitality have absolute control of this jungle, brought about by just the raw power of the Trundle pick. So good against these tankier options. Right towards the top lane, poor Smitty J. Alti going to connect. Smitty J now in trouble. Try to bring it back, locks Gilius up, but Gilius not under tower. It's actually Jizuke who gets oh. lucky to make it, take it down, one. Not gonna be able to make it back, just the one for one. No assist for the Cassidy, but well played by Smitty J. Smitty J gets something here. Could explain one of the reasons for this Orn pick is it's a little bit better at defending itself, especially with that massive ulti. Knowing that there's a high chance he's gonna be the target in the early game. He dies for a second time, but this time he at least got a kill in return. I think HK would have loved it to go over to Cassidy, but he can't get... Everything, Shook gets the Mountain Drake on bottom side, a cross map is set up. They don't get the bot lane turret, but at least they get to push in again with Sheriff. This is the exact same setup as before, but this time Smitty J is not as low. And there's no minion wave when Vitality walks in, so they end up tanking the turret the entire time. 
That's a great ulti from Smitty J. Good use of the Braum. I mean the Orn. Braum, Orn, almost the same. Good use of the giant ram thing. It's my uh, Danish accent. Yeah. So I, I put a B in front of everything. Uh, Orn. The Bash. Ash. Bash. Moving forward. Just got a giggle in my ear from somewhere, not from where I came from. <laughs> All right, Divisio. 1 3. 2K gold lead, just about for vitality. More like 1.5 at this stage of the game. Now H2K were able to get the Mountain Drake, not quite what they wanted. Once again, Dragon Spawns appear to be heavily in the favor of vitality in these games. But Mountain, pretty good for them to be able to try to contest these more relevant objectives and siege up some of these towers. Obviously a problem also for H2K that they lost that bit lane turret. So if we will get pushed far back, he doesn't have TP, so it's very easy for Vitality to apply pressure both side lanes. Sheriff needs his uh, time Kenshin to defend him, otherwise he's just gonna die instantly, and Vitality needs to get uh, down all these outer turrets, abuse the fact they have Dezuke on Talia in mid, and Jack Troll and the rest of Vitality almost getting the bot lane one. Cast it on the way down, they're ready to take the fight if the opportunity presents itself. Ash has the arrow, but not a whole lot of mana otherwise. But this time there was no ulti from Dizuke, it's gonna be there next time. So when we see the exact same play, they can actually execute with Talia. For now, Selfie gets to push out, he's hoping nothing happens for another three minutes so that TP can be ready, but I think Vitality should be able to get a bigger gold advantage with a mid lane control they're going to get. And here comes Gilius trying to play around the bottom side. TP now coming in as well. Sheriff potentially in trouble. Alti comes out. This is perfect. He's blocked up, but the pillar stops him from going any further. Sheriff trying to flash back, trying to get something back. He's trying to turn the play. Beautiful from the rookie. 80 carry wants to get a little bit more. Selfie is here. That's the double for the Orn. Now backing off his vitality look for the disengage, but a beautiful turn from Sheriff. Oh my god. Promise you and Sheriff, they bought so much time, and then instead of trying to disengage, they spit Sheriff right back in the face of Mini Troopax. Great flash. And suddenly, they get it all. Exactly what they needed in this game. Clutch plays, Selfie coming in just in time. Sheriff, beautiful maneuvers, and Smitty J grabbing all the kills. And what looked like a flash to me was in fact just Tom Kench spitting Sheriff at the enemy team. Still sitting on that cooldown for himself, and suddenly, what actually looked like a vitality play was a big win for H2K. Dead even in gold in this game here. TP is soon ready for Selfie. They could have been punished very hard during that cooldown. Jizuke still will have a bit of time to do it with Talia. Push mid all the way down to tier 2, then go for the side lane play. Let's see what happens here. Sherith and Promiscuit, they buy time. Good reaction with TP, and Selfie could move first. Oh, it's actually just Mini Trubex shooting back Sherith. That would knock him further away. He ends up dancing around. Jack Roll misses the old, and Sherith wins the fight together with H2K. What was important here was the fact that Jizuke had walked down to bot lane before this, about a minute before this, they could almost kill the bot lane turret, but not quite. And that actually gave Selfie a ton of time to push out mid. So it was his turn to move first. And the moment this bot lane play happened, Selfie had already walked from his lane and he would get there first. And suddenly H2K also with a good TP from Smitty J wins the fight. The starting rift held. Want to get this one, want to keep the ball rolling. Gold not quite evened up, but it's clear who has the advantage at this stage of the game. Mini Troopaxe going from the top side. Maybe they want to get a fight for this. Is that going to be able to grab it? Warren coming in. Body blocked. Arrow is going to connect on the Gilius. Jizuke could be the one who's in trouble. Shook on the backside, immediately leaping through. Going to pick up the trundle and put him in the middle of everything. Mini Troopaxe remains untouched, but he just doesn't have enough damage at this point in the game. Gilius goes down. That's two picked up for H2K. Another good fight here. H2K using the advantage. Looking for more. Promise Q. He's actually behind Mini Troopaxe. Mini Troopaxe. Let's make it out. Flash over. Blast cone. Good escape path. Wall coming oh. in as well. Suzuki is uh, a little bit alone behind the enemy lines here, but there's a Cassidy next to him now. He will be fine. Everyone gets to back away on the side of H2K. Win bot lane, fight. Turn it top lane. Start Rift Hell. Decisive calling. Looking for the engage. The Orn pick. Paying off here in these fights. Good ulti bot lane from Smitty J. Another one coming in here. And Copper Shot and the rest of Vitality. Lose another fight, and they're now down in gold, despite them actually having the advantage before this. Look at the setup. Fight breaks out, Smitty starts the ult. Instantly gets blocked by Jack Roll, but just the fact he's doing this actually forces Vitality to step in and kind of overextend with their support. So yes, it gets blocked, but it's still an effective tool to start the fight, and that's the most important difference between Orn and Chogath. Chogath is not able to start fights like this. Orn, yes, it can get blocked, but the enemy support is then overextended. You can see H2K with so many engage options just looks good for the team. Of course, as a reminder, 
Following this game, we will be having the post-game lobby, breaking down the week's action, looking ahead towards semifinals. That will be on twitch.tv slash EULCS. So if you're on Riot Games, you may want to make the switch. If you're on YouTube, you can stay exactly where you're at, and we'll swap for you. Your Vitality. You want to swap to the other stream, go back a few minutes, and then replay those few minutes in a completely different way. They had everything going for them. They had advantage in mid, pushing in with the Talia, no TP from the enemy cast it in, looking to take a bot lane turret that's still alive. But due to very good plays from H2K, both bot lane and then the Rift held, we now see HK with the goal lead. We now see Selfie. Two assists on his side, got his kill against the Braum in the last one, and now he's getting a top lane turret. We'll lose Infernal for those of Vitality. Maybe okay, Seven can TP Ooh. in. If you look for the backup, good Braum shield does come in. Gilius trying to run on the way in the middle of everything. Spitty J could be taken down. Astro does manage to connect, but it's on to Gilius. That's the shutdown. Selfie in the back lines. Who's going to get the Infernal Drake? Eyes on the prize. Selfie could just get taken out here. Goes over the wall. Mini Truebacks wants a little bit more. Get the cast out. Selfie, one more auto. They're going to be able to take him out. Suddenly Vitality are in absolute control. Mini Truebacks is going to get the reset. We'll try to get the double here as the delay on the passive will stop anything else from happening, but it's only two members alive. Three, rather. Shook will finally go down. Shook at the Infernal, but Vitality get the fight. They were starting it as five. They thought it was just going to be a trade. Top lane turret for H2K, Drake for Vitality, but the TP comes in from Selfie, and Smitty J very quickly found himself in the middle of the team, and Promiscu just couldn't get in in time. He tried to flash forward and devour him, but he was too far away, and Vitality win the fight, get a bunch of summoners, get a bot lane turret, big goal lead all of a sudden. They don't care about losing that Infernal when you stir it. Big goal lead all of a sudden. They don't care about losing that Infernal when you suddenly get a 3k advantage after it was so close before this fight. Now just 2k, but it does mean that the Infinity Edge will come through for the Chasana on her back as we look back at this fight. Okay, TP comes in in the Dragon Pit, and Smitty Jane found himself in the middle of five members, and Promise Q is slowed down by the pillar. He can't get in range in time to save Smitty J and Selfie ends up taking a ton of damage before he's able to jump out. And yes, Shook can get the Drake, but now he's obviously also going to die in the fight. Let's see if Vitality can use this gold lead to get the big objective, the Baron. Will it be enough? Baron, of course, the Achilles heals. Heard from Medic. Either of these teams have played super clean around the objective. But will be crucial if they want to close it out here. The cast continues to scale up, continues to be quite terrifying. But many true packs as well is that late game carry threat. But this game, it kind of felt like Vitality had everything under control, but then suddenly HK found ways back in the game. They used them, they executed on it. And then now it felt like HK were doing everything correct. And then we get this big team fight where Vitality win it. Now we get another one. It'll be the follow up. Selfie remains untouched. We're trying to block the ultimate for Jack Troll, but that means he can't protect himself. Now leaps back to the team, wants to get a little bit more. Shook leaps in. Now going forward, Selfie grabs one, rather mini True Pack's gonna get it, they try to find the disengage, Cyan ulti comes out, but it is not effective. Both teams backing off, it's the single pick on the side of H2K. Oh, we get a lot of team fights here. Jack Troll can block that Arnold every single time, but whenever he's doing that, he actually stands in the front and H2K can try and target him. Shook pulls him back, that's a wall coming. I want to see to the tier two, they're trying to block off the rest of the team, they have the Tristana, they could just break it down, both members gonna get knocked back actually. Good unraveled Earth. Shook Ooh. does lead into the middle of the team, but instantly he's going to get deleted. He has no passive. That's exactly what they want. Mini True Packs could look to go for the reset here. It's just playing safe. It's focusing on clearing the waves. So Mini J will make it out, but Shook is dead. Yeah. Baron is alive. Oh my god. Shook thought he was going to get devoured by Promise Q immediately after jumping in, but that didn't happen. I think he was out of range. Baron now being started. Unnecessary call, and suddenly Vitality gets another chance here to get further ahead in the game. The back and forth game five. TP is now coming in. 3k health and getting lower. It is going to get canceled. That's H2K it. are going to give it up. That's first Baron of the game going to Vitality. Just like game one, the first Baron goes over to Vitality without having to risk any smite steals. They get a fight, which actually gets started by H2K. Should want to jump in, force them away, and then get devoured. That didn't happen, and then he ends up just dying. And 22 minute Baron for Vitality. Keep your eyes on the Unraveled Earth as well. I'm pretty sure he leaps through a lot of these rocks. So let's see what happens here. Shook jumps in. Half health. Promise Q is very far away. Can't get in range of Shook. The flash is already gone. And then Shook just dies. And suddenly, Vitality gets a Baron. Good patience here. So many games where we would have seen Mini True Packs take a giant risk and leap in, plays safe, plays back, knows the Baron is the objective. And now Mini True Packs trying to hunt down Selfie, and you can see why. That's a three item Tristana. Selfie's going to have to give him some respect. I mean, Vitality has been getting every advantage now to win this game. Their biggest weakness has been the first Baron of 
the series or first Baron of the game is where they have lost so many. But now by again getting this kind of fight where it's kind of crazy engaged from H2K that's not necessary, but that's he just punished him. Get the Baron, they can get a massive goal lead now. Could H2K is so far down that it feels like Batalzi just simply can't lose the game. They need to get all these out of turrets. They have a super fed Tristana. And remember, it's all on Selfie, but it's going to be Selfie versus many true packs to carry the game. Now Shook wants to bring it back. Block does come in. We'll stop the follow up there by Tauti on the side. Selfie is going to be in trouble, tries to leap out, but immediately they're getting cut down. This is not what they want. Baron buff is up on Vitality. H2K taking so many risks, and this means another tier two will drop, but it could just be the inhibitor. Vitality, almost two minutes left on the Baron buff. Getting a ton of gold on the carries again. There's another 1,600 gold on mini true packs. He hasn't even spent yet. He is so fed in this game. And that was after HK actually had to play the bot lane and put them back into it. Now this AD carry has got all the kills. He's getting mid in him. They have only one out of turret left, and that's in the bot lane. And Vitality are getting so much from this early Baron. They couldn't ask for more in this mid game. This is so good for the team overall. And now we got to see also if H2K, like mentally, can they keep up? Because they've just, because they've just jumped into Vitality multiple times and lost every single one of them. Starting at Dragon, then around this mid lane turret, losing a Baron. They're trying again here, but all five members suddenly show up and Smitty J dies and they lose the inhib. And the engages they think they have are just disrupted so consistently by the Braum Shield, by the Trundle Pillar. H2K do not get to fight on their terms. Right now they are fighting on Vitality's terms and it's not going well. Mini Troopak stepping up to be the carry. Selfie on the other side ha is the sole carry. Ash, the utility champion. It's going to be so tough for them to do. As a reminder, twitch.tv slash EULCS. Make the swap. We have a brief moment. If you're on YouTube, you're good to go. But for now, Selfie pushing on the side lane, but they will give up the tier two here. 8K gold lead within like five minutes of play. It was dead even before this, and now we have a huge advantage. Cassidy is still in Block comes top in. lane. It's just the slow seat, Sheriff in trouble. Ulti gonna come out, they have to flash back to safety, but any true hacks now gets to leap forward aggressively, and suddenly it's the inhibitor in their sight. Selfie is here now, but there's not a lot he can do. Two inhibitors down for H2K. They've been clutched, they've made so many comebacks this season, but 8K gold deficit, I don't know if they can do it to Fischio. And we can criticize Vitality's Barons, but when they get the Baron, they're decisive. They know what to do with the Baron. They know how to snowball the game. Rushing down towards mid first, then getting bot lane. Two in hips gone. Giant goal lead, already one Infernal. Mini Troopers is so fed in this game now. He becomes the biggest carry on Vitality. And it feels like the next few minutes, they might be able to finish the game completely. If they win one more fight with Super Mini, that's it. Game is over, they're in the semi-final. I thought this was going to be a very long game, super close, but two big fights in a row going in favor of Vitality has meant they get a Baron, they get two inhibs. That was quick. Very quick. Just very good play to punish the opposition. And Shook, second time in the series, he's, he's gone for something probably too greedy, taking too many risks. The Baron, the Zack engaged there. Falling down now, and Selfie just was not able to follow up. The cast and the pick that they're trying to rely on hasn't been able to do what it needs to, as Vitality are just too far ahead at this point in the game. And yes, Talia can't match the cast in scaling, but Tristana damn well can. And just in a pure 5 on 5, Talia damage is fantastic. If you're just hitting the front line every time, especially with the number, it just sets up many troopers to carry even harder. Double banner coming in for that last in hit. Ash the only option to actually clear these out. Too much magic damage. Doing what they can. Tower's gonna go down. Shook tries to leap into the middle of the team. Will get locked up. They could take down Jisuke here. That would be massive. Smitty J gonna throw it back. Not going to connect with the ultimate, though. His immediate leap out for many true packs. One member down. Sheriff does manage to kill the mid laner, but it might not be enough. Selfie leaps in and he goes down. That could just be it. The reset. Many true packs wants to bring it home. The hero for the team. Cabo is here. Gilly is in the middle of everything. Third inhibitor set to fall. They're trying to back off. Jack Troll body blocking for the team as Sheriff is still untouched and healthy. Now looking for the retreat. They got three inhibitors. They don't need anything else, but Smitty J is overstepping. They're looking to punish the flashback from Gilly. Both sides backing off, but three inhibs down in the favor of Vitality. It looked like a bad fight at first when Jisuke got hit by the arrow and he dropped. But Mini Trupex, he's the fed carry on the side of Vitality. And by him just staying alive, could actually turn it around. Kill Selfie, get the last inhib. But they don't care about getting a one for one here. Still a win for Vitality. Go back 
Spend more gold on your Tristana. Why not? Almost another 2,000 sitting on his side. Shook goes in. Notice the arrow. Another 2,000 sitting on his side. Shook goes in. Notice the arrow landing onto the Zuke. He can't get out. No cleanse. So that's a very early kill for H2K. But they can't get properly onto many true packs. And he's just sitting and hitting the front line every single time. A lot of tanks. Sheriff's damage at the moment is not, it's not, not enough for his team. And when Selfie tried to make the play, he just died instantly. No hourglass for him. And you can see who's carrying his mini true packs. Gotta give credit to Sheriff. Even on a non hyper carry pick, he is still doing a lot of damage in these fights, but it has not been enough. Selfie really dropping the ball in terms of expected carry here. Expected carry here. Talented should be able to secure a second Baron. Should be able to go in and go for the last. That's the knock of the fight. And the CC. Spin J could just go down. TP comes in on the backside. They're ready for the cast to come in, but Selfie just has to retreat immediately. They're going onto him. That might be enough. They've taken down many true packs. Will it be enough? Jazuke now running, trying to get through for more damage on the me? team. Sheriff. Oh, Selfie looking for the resets. Goes in. Has to be careful, though. There goes the Zack as well. Jazuke pulling back. The entire team, you can see veteran face in his hands. He knows what this fight means. A good fight for H2K after such a long game. That fight was everything for H2K. If they lost here, bam, game is over. You're out of playoffs, but they actually get onto mini true packs. They kill him. Delay the Baron for Vitality. There are so many minions pushing into their base. They can go back and kill them without losing the big objective yet. I think Vitality can still start it with Gilius and Jizuke. But that certainly gets a bit risky because there's five members alive from H2K. No TPs on Selfie, but there is one on Smitty J. Hawk shot available. They start and they immediately pull back because they see the Ash has vision. Three items for the Ash. Four shot items. TP in. They should still be able to get the Baron. If not this time, at least next time around. There we go. TP True coming. Backs. Moment of truth. Shook needs to take it all away. But Jack Troll with no ulti either. It's going to be tough to stop this. Tom Kench has brought in Selfie. Oh my god, they actually, they're walking away now. I mean, Trubex is on his way, he's almost here. They still know that there's no Orn, he's sitting in base, he needs to TP away, but then suddenly the Nexus turrets might fall. Also, Ash is in base, killing minions. Baron being started again. Bit of damage being dealt by the Baron onto Vitality. Is it all just gonna come down around. to 50-50? Shook. Start to back off. Remember, you can pill a Shook when he tries to get in. You do it early enough. No flash on the Zac. Ulti for Jack Troll. Here we go. They knock it back. Then you manage to get in Vitality, secure the Baron. Backing off. It's, it's, it's Jazuke who gets it in the end, but it was Shook dead. Five members strong. Two open inhibitors, one already down. This could just be the end for Vitality. They still need to push all the way in and finish these very low Nexus turrets. Everyone from Vitality right there just screamed, kill the Baron, just burn it before Shook gets close enough, and it ends up being Jazuke securing it. Could have been a big, big moment for H2K, but instead it's Vitality getting second Baron of the game. Giant goal lead. Fed, fed, AD carry. Looking for one last fight. They can just go down, secure an inip. Shook is dead for another 10 seconds. H2K cannot fight this. Moments of truth. Cast it in on the flank. He's spotted. Good ward. Selfie's moment to shine if he can get into the middle of the team. Has to go back over the wall. Could be the slow, steady finish. Inhibitor down, selfie backing off. Many true backs though. Oh, it's a lot of damage. It's a big crit, ulti block, stops the engage. Just trying to slow down the game as much as they can on the side of H2K. Mini wave pushing on the top side needs to be answered. 7k gold lead for Vitality. They're tied in dragons. Many true packs. And they're so close, man. They just want to win one last fight. Many true packs. And they're so close, man. They just want to win one last fight so they can walk in and kill that Nexus. The entire mid game has been in their favor. Dragon fights, they win it. Mid lane sieges, boom, they kill Shook. Take the first Baron of the game. Don't need to risk a 50-50. We already killed the jungler. That is the biggest kind of win for Vitality ever. For Vitality ever. If they can actually take a fight before the first Baron. And they managed to do it in this game here. Mini Trupex. Looking to carry the next team fight. HK looking to try and kill him again. They've actually successfully killed one of the carries the last two fights. So he takes a lot of damage just for poking his head in the middle of that team. Has to be careful. Mark got the alt flashes. He needs to find one now if they want to turn it. But he just takes so much poke back when you're trying to approach. Sheriff mostly untouched. They do manage to hit onto Jizuke. Not going to be able to grab those. He flashes back. This is the fight that they need. Maybe they can get it. Sheriff's still alive. Wants to hit a few more members. Can they turn this back? Jizuke has taken out Spinny J. Mini True back. Selfie's dead. Still alive. Selfie jumped right in and died again. Vitality, four members alive. They got the two carries. Mini True Packs. 
Sheriff, the only source of damage. The knockup combo stops, shook in his tracks. Unstoppable, but they take him down. They got Vitality. it, they got it. Moving in for the win. Sheriff just does not have enough life left. Tries to take down many true packs. Deficio, this is it. Vitality, a grueling five game series, but with two inhibitors down, the base wide open. They've got their eyes set on the prize. They're feeling good. They're cheering on the stage. And three rookies, the lineup of Vitality, prove themselves worthy of the top four in the EU LCS. The biggest win in Vitality history, and they're dealing with a bunch of rookies, a veteran in the top lane, and God Gilius himself. Moving forward to face Fnatic, backing up all the trash talk, shutting down all the doubters. This series, it had it all. Insane back and forths, bunch of early games for Vitality. This last game here was so close up until the 20 minute mark. It was back and forth, dead even in gold, but then Vitality started winning fight after fight. Whenever H2K tried to jump in, they lost. Mini Trubex picked up all the kills. The first Baron goes straight to Vitality. And when they get that Baron, they are decisive. They get the enables. They get a massive goal lead for themselves. And they were able to now close out this game. A huge win for Vitality. And a great series overall. So much back and forth. Just when it came down to it, the moment the pressure was on, they managed to keep it together. And the Trundle pick rearing its head once again in the ULCS playoffs, showing the power that it can have in disrupting these fights. Undefeated in playoffs so far, the good old Trundle Jungle. 3-0, I believe. Yes, sir. And of course, you just have to... You have to praise many true backs to Jizuke for playing well, for, for doing what they could to disrupt the fights, but also the, the three tanks. The pillar coming in from Gilius, the knock-up on the Decimating Smash, the beautiful Unbreakables coming in from Braum to stop yeah. the Ornn engages. They played so well around the team comp that H2K put together. Jaxxel blocked absolutely everything with this Braum. But Mini Trubex, it feels so good for him. We always talk about the other AD carry. Ah, it's about upset in the start. Then it's about Sheriff for this series. But it ends up being about Mini Trubex in the end. They put a lot of focus on him in the draft. They kept playing towards the bottom side in the first few games. It was su it was successful. They got ahead in the early game. And then they put him on this and, Tristana. And look, you want people to talk about you? Take everybody else out. Upset is gone. Sheriff is out of playoffs. All that's left for rookie 80 carries is it's many true. true packs, baby. Of course, we've narrowed it down to Gilius, Jizuki, and many true packs in the contest for player of the series. So head over to at LO Esports on Twitter. You guys can vote for your pick. It's actually really, really hard to decide. It is, but I, my mind is already jumping straight to the semifinals now. G2 Splice, that's insane, that's on Friday. And then Vitality versus Fnatic. I will remind you, Reckless on post-game lobby set, the only team he's afraid of, of the current ones left in playoffs, Vitality. It's going to be exciting. Well, in tonight's edition of the po EU LCS Post Game Lobby, we'll talk to some of the winners. Look forward to the semifinals and more on twitch.tv slash Riot Games. It is time for the NALCS countdown ahead of their first quarterfinal between Team Liquid and Cloud9. Here in Berlin, we're ready to kick off the EU LCS Post Game Lobby. Be sure to join us. We'll see you on twitch.tv slash EU LCS.